Hello everyone. So today we will learn about classification of perineal injury. So this was a poll that I had put on my telegram group yesterday based on the daily targets that we had for yesterday in day 4 of obstetrics and gynecology. So let me just brief you about the classification of perineal injury which is a very important topic. So it's a very easy topic to be remembered. What is first degree, second degree, third degree and fourth degree perineal tear. So look at this image. So from anterior to posterior, you can see there would be vagina. Then there would be these perineal muscles. There is anus, that is the anal sphincter. And then there would be rectum or the anal epithelium. So the first degree tear is basically when it involves here, it is just confined to vaginal mucosa. The second degree is when it goes behind and it involves the perineal muscles also. But the anal sphincter is intact. Third degree is when there is injury to the anal sphincter complex that is external and internal. And in the third degree, remember third degree, third for three. So you have three subcategories, 3A, 3B and 3C. 3A and 3B are the ones where you have involvement of external anal sphincter. 3C involves the internal anal sphincter. 3A is when external anal sphincter is less than 50% and 3B is when it is more than 50%. And when it involves the internal anal sphincter, it becomes 3C. The final tear, the final degree, 4th degree is when it extends to the rectal mucosa or the anal epithelium. That means it extends inside. So first it involves the external sphincter, then the internal sphincter and then it involves the anal epithelium or the rectal mucosa. So these are your degrees of perineal tear. We can get an image based question on this uh, topic. So you may get an image like this to identify. So you can see like this is your uh, vagina here. It's just involving the vagina. So this is your first degree. This is your first degree tear. Behind that we said are the perineal muscles. So you can see this region here. These, this is the region of your perineal muscles. So that is stone. So perineal muscle stone is your second degree tear. Anal sphincter is here which is intact. So it is second degree. Now when the anal sphincter you can see it is extending to the anal sphincter as well. So that means that anal sphincter is third degree tear. This particular degree has been asked many times that when anal sphincter is involved it is third degree tear. And then when it is extending, you can see through the anus, it's extending to the rectum also or the anal epithelium, then it becomes the fourth degree tear, right? Again, one more image for reinforcement. You can see it's confined to vagina. So this is your first degree tear. Here you can see the perineal muscles are toned. The anal sphincter is intact. So this becomes your second degree tear. Here you can see the anal sphincter is also gone, but it's not extending inside to the epithelium or the rectal mucosa. So anal sphincter tone is your third degree tear. Here your anal sphincter is gone. You can see it's extending inside also to the rectum as well. So that becomes your fourth degree tear. Alright, so remember that first degree is your vagina, second degree is second degree is the perineal muscles, third degree is the anal sphincter and fourth degree is the rectal mucosa or the anal epithelium, right? Now some more important points about uh, perineal tear that we should remember, like if you have a female who presents with flatal incontinence or fecal incontinence that is you can suspect a rectovaginal fistula and perineal tear complete perineal tear is a common cause of rectovaginal fistula so please remember since it is extending from vagina to the rectum so that is why it is like your rectovaginal fistula and rectovaginal fistula means there will be fecal or flatus incontinence so you can get a clinical scenario that three months even after three months after delivery of a woman presents with history of fecal incontinence since the day of delivery suspect rectovaginal fistula it could be due to complete perineal tear and this complete perineal tear is made uh, is more common when there is phase to pubis delivery when there is phase to pubis delivery then we have then we have complete perineal tear and the time of repair of complete perineal tear if it is recognized immediately during delivery it can be done within 24 hours all right otherwise we have to wait for some weeks for the inflammation and all to subside and we need to give a single shot of antibiotic during the time of repair according to RCOG guidelines. 
and after the complete perineal tear uh, ideally the woman should wait at least for one year before next pregnancy and it is not that the next pregnancy vaginal delivery cannot be done even vaginal delivery can be done okay even vaginal delivery can be done so these are the important points about perineal tear that we all should remember for our exams so signing off for today dr nikita here see you until next time